Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video that was voted for by my patrons and YouTube members. So I want to say a massive thank you first of all to all those who voted and showing your support over on Patreon and YouTube members. So what we're doing today is we're going to go through and explain how to do an omnidirectional dash. Now what this means is that you're able to evade and dash in any direction you like in a full 360 degrees of movement. And this is useful for a gamepad for example because a thumbstick you can direct it in any direction and push a button and move in that direction. So alongside that we're also going to go through and show you how to do immunity frames making your character immune to any damage whilst they are evading the attack. And for YouTube members who are a gold patron or higher, you can download the product files for this project right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I brought in Twin Blast, the Paragon character from the marketplace. He's free to download. And the reason why I brought him in here is because he has animations already for us to handle evasions. So here I've just got dragged in the default uh, player character that they provide for you for Twin Blast. And if you play it, you'll realize that you can run around, you can shoot, you can do a little jump, but you can't dodge or anything like that. So we're going to add a dodge mechanic to this character using the animations he has provided. Now, if you're using your own animations, uh, by all means use those, but it's totally up to you. Otherwise, follow along uh, with Twin Blast here. So let's take a look at the animations we have for Twin Blast. So in here, he has evasion ones over here. We've got evade backward. Got evade forward. Evade left. And evade right. Okay, so we've got a variety of different animations we can use. And as you can see, they're not root motion and they're just root, uh, root locked onto space here. If you are using root motion, you can totally do that. It's up to you if you wish to do that. Uh, if you do have any questions about root motion, just leave a comment below in the video comments and um, I'll try and answer as many as I can. But we are sticking with a root lock going on here. So, how this works is that we're going to put this onto a blend space so we can get the omnidirectional direction for our jumping. So we're going to create the animation blend space here using a two dimensional blend space. We're going to use a twin blast skeleton and we're going to do this one as evasion blend space. And in here, we need to set up the horizontal axis and the vertical axis to match what we're going to be having for our inputs on our gamepad controller. Uh, so you can only really do this on gamepad because using omnidirectional stuff is a joystick sort of uh, movement. And so horizontal refers to the left thumbstick's x-axis and the vertical axis here is uh, representative of the left thumbstick's y-axis. So on the horizontal axis here we're going to put in the x dash value and it's going to go between minus 1 and 1 in the value range there. And the vertical axis here we're going to do y value. And it's going to go between minus 1 and 1 there. So now we can drag in our different animations. So let's type in evade in our search box over here. And we're going to drag them all in. So we're going to do evade backwards at when x is 0, but y is minus 1. Evade forwards when y is 1. Left, we're going to put over on the left-hand side here. And right, we're going to do the right-hand side here. And so now we have this omnidirectional jump because now you, you can see how it blends between the different directions to handle those different movements okay i'm going to hit save and we're going to go to the animation blueprint we're going to add this to the animation blueprint so here this is the, the one that comes with twin blast so we just edit this one to handle this and all i'm going to do is going to go to its ground locomotion state machine and add in a new state in here and i can only go into dodging or evasion if i'm idle and or running so let's drag out a run here and do add state and do evade and evasion and open this up and drag in our evasion blend space plug that in and promote both of these to variables Now with the evasion blend space, we're going to turn off the looping behavior of this. So turn off loop and hit compile and save. Let's go back to the state machine here. So this is going to go into evade here. And we've got three stages you can go into. You can go from idle to jog start to run, then to evade. Now this is three transitions. So it will technically allow this because the default 
set up here if I go back to the animation graph the animation state machine is set to here max transition uh, per tick to be th set to three so we could leave it like that but for simplicity and to guarantee it will do it let's drag in the idle into this as well now with the idle going to evade we were going to drag another one back from evade to idle and we're going to go into the run into evade transition and you can promote that to a variable and this is going to be is evading and we'll do exactly the same one for this so drag in is evading go from idle to evade and then because we've got our setup here to have been not looping we can click on the one that goes back to idle here and take it to be automatic rule based this means because it's unticked for looping is when the animations finish its run it will just automatically transition back to idle for us compile and save that and that should be okay as it is now when it does go back from evade to idle we do need to tell the system that hey you've finished your evasion stop evading so with the transition rule going between evade to idle select it and then on the right hand side scroll down and you'll see the notifications here for start end and interrupt transitions we're going to do the start transition and we're going to do reset evade now when you've done that and compiled it if you go back to the event graph you can now right click anywhere here and search for that new reset evade and notify and this gets called as soon as that transition there has started and when this happens here we're going to tell is evading and set it to false Hit compile and save that okay so there's the basic setup so we're going to send over a, a, a command to our animation blueprint here to handle the evasion now for that i need to set up a function to set the x and y values so let's go up top here to functions add a new function and we do start evade and on the start evade here we're going to have one input for x value and that's going to be a float and you're going to have another value set to y where we're going to take in the x and y coordinates of our joystick or gamepad's thumbstick and pass it through into here and so for this we just need to set that to our x and y value so drag x value there y value there lock that in and is evading we're going to set that to true and because that's it set to true it's going to trigger the locomotion state machine to handle that for us okay uh, and that will handle that next i want to call this function from our characters blueprint so let's go over to our character and I'm going to set this up for our input here to handle evasion. So let's go to project settings, go to input settings, and add a new action mapping for evade. And the key we're going to use for this is going to be the gamepad's B button or face button right, as it's better known as. We'll close that. And now I can search for the evade. And there it is. So now if I drag out my mesh and get the anim instance and then cast to our particular twin blast animation blueprint I can then from there I can start evade and the x value and y value will come from our thumbstick inputs which are already being handled by movement here move forward and move right move forward is the y-axis and move right is the x-axis so if I just right click in here and search for move forward I'll see move forward axis value and as I said that be the y-axis so let's plug that in there and then we've got the move right axis value and that'd be the x there hit compile and save that now whilst we're evading this is also going to trigger the movement as well because the movement is tied to our axis values as well so the animation should tie up with where we're moving to as well so let's go and test that out in game and see how that looks so running around and if I hit the B button I've got my evasion set up to handle omnidirectional jump now one thing you may note 
that you want to have is to have it so that with the evasion that you're invincible whilst the evasion is going on so you can't get hit well that's simple enough to do what we're going to do is we're going to make an immunity frames so to do that we're going to create a new blueprint class and we're going to go to all classes and search for anim notifier state select this and in here we're going to set up the immunity frame so now immunity frame and in notify state we're going to set up the function go to override and you'll do notify begin and on notify begin we're going to take the mesh comp and get the owner of the mesh comp And from that, we can then tell them to be not, they can't be damaged. So set can be damaged. We can set that to false. And tick this return value. And then we go to functions override again and do notify end. And we're going to turn it back on. So we're going to do get owner. And then from there can be damaged back on to true turn that on so now if we go to the animations for our evasions evade forward for example we can go to the notify track and indicate when we want it to be immune so we're going to do it as soon as he leaves the floor in this case there so I'm going to right click on the notify track go to add notify state and do immunity frame and then all I do is drag out how long I want him to be immune for. So we do it when he lands. So there. So we drag out the length of this thing to be that long. And I'll do this to each one. So that's evade forward, evade left. Go there. And if I state immunity frame. And it should end roughly the same spot because of the way they blended together. So it should be pretty much almost the same so now we've got those set up now to test this out let's go into our immunity frames here and just put in little print strings here to indicate when these have been fired so we'll do print string say hello actually no let's make it say immune and on the notify end we'll do print string and do not immune and hit compile save all that so let's play test this again and now as I run around and hit B you can see that I'm immune not immune immune not immune and so on and so forth so now my character can't take damage whilst they're evading this is to help you sell the idea that the character can evade and dodge attacks And there we have it. We've now got an omnidirectional dash using our Twin Blast character to evade and move out of the way. Again, I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support and for voting for this video. If you too would like to vote on videos, head to patreon.com forward slash Ryan and you can cast your vote on each month's video release. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.